The consciousness of those same atheists it puts such a counter-argument, it can be said. Why such a merciful God, in whom you believe, allows all this, allows strife… What exactly? Allows wars, allows… I understand. This is an age-old question. Why does He allow injustice and all the bad things that are happening in this world? Yes, if He is so merciful. Well, I say simply, God, He never interferes in human affairs, in human choice. And everything that happens here, war, strife or troubles, is human choice. Isn't it people who start wars? And where do wars begin? In the head. Who whispers? Consciousness. What is the reason here? Pridefulness and greed. There is nothing else. Pridefulness and greed of certain people who have power. And why do they start wars? They're bored. Or they want something that doesn't belong to them, to take what somebody else is. If they cannot buy it, let's go to war, because supposedly we are strong. We will take what somebody else is. Well, isn't it so? It is. Yes, and then exactly such atheists appear who say that I do not believe in God, I do not believe in your religion, because you do not act in the way it is written in your sacred writings. As it's written, do not kill, but the wars are going on. Being hit on the left cheek, turn right one, and believers don't do that way, So, well, we have already talked about this, that some time ago this was relevant. People were more spiritual, and an evil person who lives under the control of Satan, well, a person cannot punish another one very much. They will hit you on one cheek, well, you understand that he is directed by Satan, a person has punished himself, how can you punish him more? Well, no way. That's why they said, turn the other cheek, but do not be angry. That was the point. Forget this person. He has punished himself. You cannot punish him more. But excuse me when after only a few thousand years the system has become so strong that now, well, if you turn the other one, he will hit you even in the nose. I've already said that if you are bitten on your left leg by a rabid dog, do not give him the right one. Evil must be punished. But here also the question is that one may misunderstand what is evil and what is good, and might become a rabbit dog oneself and bite others. This is important. Also, there was such a key question, how can we distinguish a good, God-pleasing deed from a deed that God is not willing? And an example was given, that a God-pleasing deed is an action at the moment of which you experience joy, but if there occur, some other states come. Listen, but if I'm eating a candy and feel the joy because of it, is it a God-pleasing deed or not? Well, you know… It's my personal business, right? To the dictation of consciousness, after all, it is experiencing this joy. Now, as a personality, I don't really care what an organism that lives in my organism wants to eat and why it needed this chocolate. And which parasite wants? Well, generally speaking, which parasite wants the chocolate now? But the consciousness cares about this. Well, what does God have to do with this? Well, it's simple. What does it mean, a God-pleasing deed or not a God-pleasing one? I'll put it simply. All the deeds that lead to spiritual development and especially to spiritual saving of people are God-pleasing deeds. All the rest is human deeds, deeds that are inevitably dead and have nothing to do with the spiritual world. Whether I praised you or I scolded you, well, what the difference has it made? A simple question. So if I prompted you, gave you a tool, and only when you accepted it and began to use it, now that is already a God-pleasing act. But if I gave you the tool, I've spent my time, but you didn't want it, again I come back to you and tell you, am I doing a God-pleasing deed or not? Of course not, because at the time when I offered you a tool, you refused, you made your choice. Well, God be with you, little goldfish, swim along, and I'll find someone who needs this tool. I will not waste a lifetime on the dead, you know, because those times are over. The alive for the living, dead for the dead. Everything is simple. And maybe in the minds of those very atheists, this will be perceived as injustice. Well, how is that? God, he's obliged. Well, God does not owe anything to anyone, first of all. God does not even know whether you exist or not until you mature and become someone whom God will notice. We've already talked about this many times. 
Well, I've said it once again. Now, as for atheists, this will infuriate them. They will say, well, how's that? He's God. He must know everything. Excuse me, as of today, the Internet knows everything. Does it know what you have in your left pocket? But perhaps you have no pocket, if you are, pardon me, resting in the negligee. Well, isn't it so? What does it have to do with the Internet? It's just an example. Or what does the alive have to do with the dead world, as a matter of fact? Yes, it may be insulting. Insulting to whom? Insulting to consciousness. What did it hook at? At the pridefulness it hooked. And what is pridefulness? And pridefulness is precisely that anchor which drags one down. Isn't it so? It is. And that's how it all starts. We must not coddle and cherish pridefulness and selfishness in ourselves. But we must work. We must study. We must strive. If you want to be saved, do save yourself. There will be no other way out. Nobody will pass it and do it for you. But there is another expression. That's when they say that the prideful people, they say, will save ourselves, and so on, that without God, human will not be saved. So who is right here and who is wrong? Well, let's say so. In fact, it's true that a person cannot be saved without God, because it is unrealistic. But, on the other hand, after all, it is a person who makes this choice, isn't it? When does he get real power, love and freedom? Only when he deserves it. When this becomes his only willingness and desire. When he steps over the Satan, going towards the light, right? When he jumps over the bottomless pits, aspiring to exit. Well, then, of course, he gets help. Say, does God give His helping hand? Yes. Yes, He does. When you enter His home. Yes, when you are pure with Him. He greets you, but only when you enter His home. And that's the point. When there is purity of intent. But the consciousness will hold you by the tail to the last. Yes, and will suck you dry. And will try to tear you away, yes? Even as you're walking through the door, it will still try to pull you back. Scream? Of course. And here is your choice, what to listen to. Consciousness or go to God, once again. Well, when a person is already walking through the door, then there is no doubt that consciousness no longer plays a role. Isn't that so?